Mark Canfield is in uh, someplace. I am in Seattle reporting from live downtown Seattle, home of Starbucks, Boeing, Microsoft, Google, Pepper Spray, and a police department that for some reason doesn't want to reform itself. Oh, my goodness. Well, uh, well, smoke a joint and take a break, Mark. Well, that's legal in Washington State. However, Wenatchee won't give uh, business licenses to retailers, so there's a big lawsuit going on there that might affect legalization now, around the rest now, of the now country. Wait, now, wait a minute. It's, it's legal to smoke it, but there, there are no shops to sell it. Correct. It's sort of hypocritical, Mike, but at the moment, it's legal to possess an ounce of marijuana in Washington State. However, it is illegal unless you're a medicinal marijuana patient. Uh, um, it is illegal to sell it, it is illegal to distribute it, and it's illegal to grow it. Uh, well, apparently the folks on the east side of the mountain don't like the idea of having pot smokers hanging out, so they are refusing to give business licenses in Wenatchee. Uh, the uh, proprietor filed a lawsuit against the city, and so according to King County Prosecutor Dan Satterberg, uh, the federal versus state's right issue, which, you know, happens over and over again in the United States. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. But the story that, the story that I thought was most interesting, you know, is, you know, in the little background on this, you and I have talked about this before, the uh, Seattle Police Department, after an eight-month review by the Department of Justice, the DOJ found that the SPD has the practice and policy of using excessive force. No. So... Yes, we all remember Dorley Rainey, the 85-year-old right. Occupy uh, piano protester that got there for space. Well, the, the re- recent development in that is two things. One, we have a new police chief. Mm-hmm. Her name is Kathleen O'Toole. She's the former police commissioner from Boston and was also on the National Police Commission in Ireland where she oversaw a bunch of these kinds of reforms with mm-hmm. local police departments. So our new mayor, Ed Murray, decided to bring her in and see if she could get things rolling on the reform issue. Unfortunately, uh, just recently, about 123 Seattle Police Department officers filed a lawsuit not only against our mayor, Ed Murray, but against U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder, claiming that this agreement that the mayor and the Justice Department have to clean up the police department violates the officer's constitutional right to be criminals yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know I, I remember and i'm sure you do too uh, well maybe you, you might be too young but the nap commission in in new york city uh after i, I think this is after the serpico uh um, the, the, the detective who uh, blew the whistle you remember the nap commission or remember reading about it only because i thought that the the film Serpico, what was it, with De Niro, was just so amazing. It was. It was. Great, great film. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and the Knapp Commission was a real thing, and the corruption that they found uh, in the New York Police Department was just astonishing, just absolutely astonishing. And, and of course, the, uh, uh, the, the blue flu that uh, uh, cops in New York City developed real quickly when they were called in to testify before this commission because they wouldn't rat out uh, anybody else in the police force, even though they knew and were probably themselves involved in corruption. But if, if you do any, any, if you just do a Wikipedia on, on the Knapp Commission, it's some really scary stuff. Mark, let me put you on hold. I got a break coming here. Uh, we'll do the break and come back and, uh, and, and talk some more. Uh, we're talking with Mark Taylor Canfield in uh, Seattle. Now, where were we? Marijuana. Well, you were talking about the Knapp Commission and what happened in the New York City. Uh, all I know is that there's, there's been an ongoing story in Seattle for years now about for years uh, police, police accountability. Yes. Oh. Actually, if you go back to the WTO demonstrations back in 1999, oh, okay. I was uh, I was a member of a group called the Committee for Local Government Accountability, ability for constitutional rights violations that took place during those demonstrations where there was this roving no protest zone which sort of set the standard for all these other major cities who have had them ever since. Mm-hmm. And uh, people being arrested for handing out copies of the uh, Bill of Rights and Jeez. crazy things like that. But In, in Seattle? Yes, it's a funny thing. You know, we're supposedly so progressive here and everybody's smoking marijuana and, you know, gay people are getting married, but the police department...
Department of Justice just has a problem, apparently, according to the Department of Justice. And uh, it has been a major political issue for local candidates in Seattle running for office, including Ed Murray, our current mayor, and our current city council member, Shama Sawan. Mm -hmm. But it's been going on for as long as I can remember, Mike, and uh, nobody seems to be able to make any headway on this issue. People ask me how that can be, and I point to the power of the police guild, which is a very powerful group. They don't normally organize with other unions. They do act more like a guild, but they um, often refuse to uh, negotiate for civil rights reforms when their contracts come up. So at one point, they were actually working without a contract for two years. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. And uh, people ask me, well, what, what's the bottom line there, Mike? You know, how can they get away with that? And I can't tell you because I don't know what the inside workings are. Right. There were these negotiations, but I can imagine possibly something like, hmm, okay, Mr. Mayor, you want us to reform ourselves and uh, and you want uh, us to be under the Department of Justice review. How about if we just don't go to work tomorrow? How about yeah. if just, there's no traffic uh, enforcement? And guess what? You have no security at your next public event. Gosh, mm. it sounds very similar to a, a like a threat. <laughs> The police department uh, is very powerful in every city around the country, and uh, there's always this struggle, you know, for accountability. Oftentimes, there are initiatives to push for civilian review boards, and in Seattle, we actually have one. It's called the Office of Professional Accountability, but mm -hmm. the history of that group is that uh, basically no police officers get uh, prosecuted in the city of Seattle, and most of the uh, cases end up um, getting thrown out. So what you get is a lot of lawsuits, a lot of civil rights lawsuits against the police department in which the city is forced to pay out, well, especially after the, the WTO demonstrations, millions of dollars in right. settlement with non-disclosure statements so that there's no fault, you know, there's no legal admission of guilt or fault. Um, but it just goes on. I guess it's the cost of doing business in the police department. You know, you have to pay those settlements sometimes. Well, you know, you know what you're describing <clears throat> sounds like uh, uh, the Atlanta Police Force. We have uh, uh, we have uh, not necessarily uh, not necessarily the Atlanta City Police Force, but police forces with, uh, in the Metro Atlanta area, uh, where this happens uh, uh, with alarming regularity, where uh, lawsuits. I, I I couldn't begin to tell you. I'd, I'd have to do the research, which I'm not inclined to do because I'm already too depressed. But I have to do the research to find out how how many millions of dollars uh, the city of Atlanta has paid to people who who suffered a police brutality, and this brutality can be white on white, white on black, black on black. It doesn't make any difference apparently uh, the race of the cop or the race of uh, the person being abused. It, it, it's kind of uh, um, you know, uh, across the board brutality. If 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 if, if a cop feels like um, his authority is being challenged, or he feels like doing it, so there there has just been millions upon millions of dollars paid out for the very same thing you're you're talking about in Seattle. It's been done here in Atlanta, and I wouldn't be surprised. I know Philadelphia has a hell of a reputation for that. Uh, I know Detroit has a hell of a reputation for that. Uh, I have a feeling that it's not unique to any particular part of the country, uh, but it's something that is growing along with the militarization of police departments. This is something that Mother Jones has written about, the nation's written about, uh, a, a, a lot of sources have written about the, uh, this militarization. As a matter of fact, we talked. I think I talked about it the other night, um, about cops who are, there, there's a federal program where the federal government encourages police departments around the country to uh, take, uh, you know, military equipment that is no longer going to be used by the military, armored personnel carriers, uh, uh, kinds of explosive weaponry and, and high-powered, uh, uh, fully automatic combat assault rifles and guns and hand grenades. And Jesus, God, I mean, what, ha what, what happened to Officer Friendly? Well, Mike, I, I have to, to say this. First of all, Seattle is the model for that, and I wrote an article for the National Lawyers Guild um, briefing on this. Uh, Seattle, in 1999, during the World Trade Organization protests, had armored cars out on the street. They used millions of dollars of pepper spray, uh, projectile weapons, tear gas, 
um, some of which was claimed to be military grade, um, and also uh, racial profiling was one of the issues that brought on these demands for reform by civil rights groups um, across the county and in Seattle. However, most of those groups have actually walked away from the table saying that even the Department of Justice review did not take uh, into consideration racial profiling as one of the issues Mm -hmm. uh, that we've been fighting here in Seattle. So, yes, it's, uh, it's a strange city to live in where you have May Day riots and all sorts of, you know, activism and progressive thinking, and at the same time you have a police department that tends to... Uh, I mean, we saw the robocops on the street during the WTO demonstration. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I'd ever seen that, and it was clear and uh, documented afterwards that the Seattle Police Department actually mm -hmm. consulted with the New York Police Department during the Republican National Convention in New York City where hundreds and hundreds of people were rounded up and arrested um, sort of like caged animals. You know, it's one of the tactics they used to. They blocked everyone from being able to leave the area and then give a dispersal order. And since people can't leave because they're blocked by police as riot clubs, they all get arrested, including reporters. Mm -hmm. uh, there were associated press reporters that have been arrested. A, uh, an ABC reporter during last year's May Day got pepper sprayed in the face. So it's also an issue of uh, press freedom at times, too. Um, and we talked about that before, too, about how most of the corporate media, they just consider it, once again, the cost of doing business. They never seem to file lawsuits or stand up for their own employees. I had to file a federal civil rights lawsuit against the Washington State Patrol after I was arrested at a sit-in at the governor's office during a six-day six encampment, long before, actually, the Occupy Wall Street protests, people were camping out in Wisconsin at the state capitol mm -hmm. and in uh, Olympia in Washington State in solidarity with, with Wisconsin. Uh, I won that federal lawsuit. Uh, Judge Robert Bryan ruled in my favor, saying that it was a violation of freedom of the press for me to be arrested when I was trying to cover an ongoing news story. And subsequently, actually 36 other people had their charges for criminal trespass dropped because all of us were told that if we set foot on Washington State property in Olympia for the next 30 to 90 days, we would be arrested, which was, of course, a way to keep people away from the protest. Well, you know, when... ...for your judicial move by the Washington State Patrol. When, They've had to change their policies since then, by the way, because I did win that lawsuit. Well, you know, when you compare uh, the, the trend or when you notice the trend or report on the trend in this country towards what you're talking about, and then take a look at the sentences that were handed down to the three Al Jazeera uh, reporters in, in Cairo, I think it was yesterday or the day before, uh, seven years in prison for the, uh, uh, the Canadian, or the Australian reporter, uh, seven to ten for the Canadian Al Jazeera reporter, and for the Egyptian, I think it was.